Greetings from Hopalong Hollow. We're in this old house and it's 2022. So welcome to a new year. Do you have anything in particular that you do in January? There's something I do every January. I do major winter cleaning. I don't do it in the spring. I don't do a spring cleaning, but I do a really thorough cleaning throughout the house from top to bottom every little nook and cranny, dusting things I may not have even looked at over the last six months. Trying to get everything nice and clean so that for the next couple weeks I can know I have a really clean house and I can concentrate on what I really want to do, which is create art or some sort of a project. So in today's video, I'm just going to impart a little bit of my information that I have gleaned about designing a room, and, of course, my style is very much antique and vintage. I'm also going to talk about antique collections and certain things that you may be interested in, if you like this sort of look. And so if you do, I hope you'll go ahead and join us, if this is your cup of tea. One of the rooms that I have been doing some heavy duty cleaning in this last few days is the landing at the top of the stairs. So that's where we are right now. A landing is one of my favorite areas in a house because you can really do so much with it. And even though it's a small area, it's an open area with a lot of light, a lot of floor space, and if you can pick the right furniture that will fit in these small niches and corners, you can really have a lot of fun designing a room like this. So let's go up here to the stair landing. And just take a look. I'm just going to start out with this room and talk a little bit about my design theories uh, as far as decorating a home. And those are just my ideas. And they may not be yours. You may not have the same taste as I at all. But um, if you do, you may enjoy this video quite a bit. So I'm going to talk a little bit about color and patterns and why I choose the things that I do and how this seems to work out perfectly for us quite a while since I did this particular area in the house but if I recall correctly it was actually my little sheep collection that set the tone for this little room at the top of the stairs of this little landing and that's why I got this toile wallpaper because it's got a very bucolic country scene um, 17th, 18th century actually and there are a lot of sheep and little thatched cottages and all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. And that's what set the scene and the colors for this particular area. Else though I had to take into account when choosing this particular wallpaper was the fact that from this landing you can see two other rooms that have wallpaper and of course paint. So I had to choose colors and wallpapers that didn't clash. So the colors in this wallpaper and the green trim had to sort of be coordinated with the bathroom wallpaper, as you can see right here, and also this bedroom's wallpaper. And going into this little guest room, we're picking up, it doesn't have wallpaper, but we are still picking up some of the same colors. So from the little green cupboard to these coverlets on a loom is repeated in that wall color, that paint color in this guest room right here, and even in the rug. So oftentimes when you are composing a room, you not only have to think of the room you're in, but the adjoining rooms, uh, especially in this case, because if all these doors are open, I'm exposed to the interiors of four other rooms. We've got the guest room, we've got the studio here, we've got another bedroom over here, and we've also got the bathroom. At the top of the stairs there's this little bitty niche and this little cupboard fits perfectly in here and the great thing about this cupboard is that it was actually a salvage piece that I rescued from a Tennessee farmhouse that was about to be burned to the ground. That They were going to torch this farmhouse because it was probably late 19, late 1800, early 1900 farmhouse when I learned they were going to torch it to make room for the cattle to graze on the property, I asked the owners if I could just go through the house and rescue anything of value or that I thought I could use. And he said, go ahead. 
I got seven beautiful wooden doors out of that house. I got some wainscoting and I got two cupboards. This was the small one. Now, when I saved this piece, it wasn't painted like this. It was simply a, about a, a poplar or pine cupboard. Not that impressive in looks. The wood was nothing to brag about. So what I did is I grain painted it. Grain painting was a way of painting unimpressive wood, making it look like something it wasn't, something just a little more important. This was very popular in early America, and the center here I did in a Pennsylvania Dutch design, more of a stylized bit of painting here. But uh, we used to do a lot of our picture frames in grain painting, James and I. And the cupboard looks fantastic like this, and it fits just perfectly in this little landing area. Another nice small piece of furniture that fits right in this landing, and it's an antique green children's cupboard, which is wonderful because it fits right between these two doors. It's a perfect size for this. Not a whole lot would fit in between these two doors. Maybe a grandfather clock, but I don't have one. But this goes all the way up to the ceiling with all kinds of delightful displays. So the print boxes full of little antique sheep, and then another print box full of more goodies, and then all the way up to the ceiling, another shelf, which is holding a collection of wooden birds. So it's always really a pleasure when you can find something that fits perfectly in a really odd space or a little niche or a corner. And this was a perfect find for here. Now, once again, we're following the green color scheme and the reds and the pinks in all the rooms, all the adjoining rooms. The doors are closed now, so you can't, you can't see them. And I'm not even going to open that studio door because I haven't cleaned that room yet. But following the green with all the green paint on the shelves, the little green cupboard, and then once again picking up the color of the green in that adjoining room with the rug and the wall paint, and then the green coverlets here on this loom. So because this has a theme of sheep and wool and weaving, etc., it also has a flax wheel and a loom, baskets of yarn, old yarn winder. Naturally, lots and lots of sheep. I purchased this little La Claire loom from um, a weaver from our craft guild. And I have still not mastered this loom at all. I have a long ways to go before I can figure the whole thing out. But it's a perfect place for it because this is a room full of sheep and wool and weaving and all sorts of natural things like baskets and birds and lovely things like that. One thing I wanted to show you was this wonderful old ladder back chair with a woven seat, which is just an absolutely marvelous Tennessee piece, if ever there was one. This is a Tennessee piece of country furniture. I have no idea how old it is, but I will tell you that it's got a beautiful patina on it. Never been refinished because it has been worn so smoothly that it never needs to be refinished. I don't really trust the seat, but I also don't want to replace it. So upon this seat, I simply put another old, old, old coverlet, which is also quite ancient. And if I ever decide to sit down here and leave, I will definitely use another chair. We have the theme of this room repeated in this old print box full of old sheep. So the little sheep, some of them are from train sets and a little metal sheep from England from train sets and some of these are plaster sheep. I use them in my creche, in my nativity, over Christmas and some of them are just little sheep toys. There's a little cardboard angora goat 
and I've just collected these for a while. So as you can see, the theme, according to the blocks up here, sheep, wool, and then a few other little collections thrown in, such as way up here, we have a lot of wooden birds, which we'll look at in a minute. I started collecting sheep long before I had my own sheep, but then that made it even more fun when I did have my actual living sheep. And not only that, I collect sheep because I work with wool. Uh, wool all the time. Things on this shelf are pretty special to me. This is an actual, this is an old pull toy, probably from 19, 1900, around that era. The reason I know is because it's in one of my 1900 catalogs toy catalogs and the cost of this little sheep here with its little wheels. A store could buy 25 of these sheep for 15 cents. So I guess the customer probably didn't have to pay that much more. Of course I paid a lot more for it than that when I bought it at the time. But what's really special to me are a couple of the other things on this shelf. This is a little dog, needle felted dog, made by my friend Linny. And she sent this to me when our old hound dog, a red bone hound dog, passed away out of old age. His name was Ezra. She needle felted this and sent it to me out of the blue. This is all long before I ever did any needle felting. And Ezra has a little note. He has wings and a little note around his neck that says, Mom and Dad, I am waiting for you. Meanwhile, I will be patrolling the mansion. John 14, 2. Thanks for giving my life worth. Love, Ezra. So... He's a very special piece. This is also a special piece sent to me by my friend Penny. And this little donkey is Jemima. And when Jemima was born, she was a surprise birth. I think you know that if you watch that video. Uh, Penny sent me this cute little needle felted donkey. And this was many years ago, long before I ever started needle felting myself. So these pieces up here, Penny also made this one. That's why these are special to me, because they have... A particular meaning from friends and every time I look at them I think of my friends those two friends of mine clean this tiny little exhibit right here in this print box of miniature salt glazed stoneware it's ever so tiny you can see that look at the, the delicacy of that teapot and most of these pieces were by Helen Graber renowned for her tiny miniatures and some of these are from just craft shows and art shows that I've done but when I get in here to clean this I have to use a q-tip because it's so tiny and each piece I have attached with wax so that it won't tumble down and get lost on the floor or sucked up with a vacuum cleaner. Here on the top of the little green cupboard we have the doll hospital. Very seldom though are operations performed on these characters because basically they just sit here and look at me as I walk by. They're pretty good. They're in pretty good condition as far as the heads go, but everything else needs some work. The fact of the matter is, I kind of like them like this because as you can see, <laughs> look at this. I mean, I really don't know what I would want to do to her because she's got everything original about her. Very old outfit on. And some of them are just so interesting just because of the old string here, the old thread used, the hand done stitching, despite the fact she's missing an arm and a hand. Oh, two hands. She was stitched with a little bit of pantaloons on. As you can see, she's got <laughs> some pretty stained pantaloons. And she's also missing her feet. But what do you do with, with things like this other than display them as they are? These little wooden carved birds that I've picked up over the years from wood carvers at art shows that I've exhibited. Every year we'll have a wild bird fly through the window and they inevitably end up perching on this shelf with these wooden birds. And I have one heck of a time trying to get them back out the window again. You 
why I just clean this shelf and all the birds on it once a year because it's just about 16 inches down from a 10 foot ceiling as is this shelf way way up on the wall folks it goes without saying that you should collect things you love or that have special meaning to you and obviously I love birds we have a lot of live birds out there in the form of ducks, geese, chickens, and peacocks. But I also love these old wooden decoys. So taking in the scope of this very small area, which is about a 10 by 12 all in all, I just love stair landings because you can make them so charming and so usable. Because here we have a great work area there with the loom. But that could be anything. It could be a work desk, or it could be a drafting table, whatever. Um, so that's fantastic right there. Even though it's a tiny space, there's great light here because there's always a window at the top of the stair landing. And then we've got the little green cupboard and lots and lots of room going all the way up to the ceiling. So now we're moving into another room that I've spent a couple days doing that serious cleaning in. And this is a small guest room right off the landing. My favorite thing in this entire room is this rug. I love this rug. It really has kind of a William Morris sort of a feel to it, but it's not. It's just a hooked rug that I picked up a couple years ago. But I love the colors in it, and that pretty much was great because it picked up the colors from the landing, but it also determined the colors of the quilt and everything else in this room, including the hangings on the wall. So even on the wall decor, I kept it pretty much at a minimum and just added a few pictures, but really love these little hand-drawn terriers. Actually, they were done by a friend of mine, and, but uh, when I framed them, I found this wonderful old paper from the early 1800s. And then we have a nostalgic print here. And this was a print that was sent to me from one of my subscribers, and it's actually the artist was Tasha Tudor's mother. Looks great in this room. I haven't had anywhere to put it until now. Here in the corner of this very small room is a uh, shiffer robe. You could have purchased this in 1904 from the Sears catalog, but I purchased it when I was about 20 years old for $135. And as I recall, I did strip it and restore it because it was had a pretty bad finish on it. But it's, it's a nice little storage piece. Um, they're not incredibly valuable by any means, but it does really well in this room because it looks really great with this old walnut rope bed here. Wonderful stockings that you see right there. Those were just sent to me by one of my subscribers. I get the nicest things. I get the most unusual gifts and goodies from some of you. I just appreciate you so much for even thinking about it, thinking about me. You're so very sweet to pack things up and send them. That's so nice of you. Displaying old books of every genre, from children's books to grown-up books to adolescent books, but I especially love to find the old classics, Jamaica Inn, anything by Charles Dickens or Edgar Allan Poe or any of the Bronte sisters, so... There's a copy of Wuthering Heights down there, which is a really great copy. So these are just old toys, old dolls, and old books in this room. And the main thing about this room is everything is dark wood. So the dark wood really enhances the color of the walls and is a dramatic contrast to the white and light colored quilts. And colors in this room. Sometimes I purchase something because it seems to have a story. 
Now, a good example is this high chair. This is rattan and wicker, probably from the later half of the 19th century. And it's in excellent condition, except for just a few places. But you can see that the back is in really, really great shape. It's had a few repairs, which were actually done by me. But then this little seat here has been replaced at some point with a piece of upholstery. And the piece of upholstery under that is even older. And you can see that it's filled with excelsior. So this is really pretty old. But what, what speaks to me is not that. What speaks to me is this little foot rest because it is so worn down. It has been worn by how many little feet have put, placed their little toes and their little shoes upon this little footrest because it's completely worn down. In fact, it's worn away in some spaces. So this little high chair was used by so many little children and maybe several generations of them. And it's still so beautiful. So I just put it in the guest room and place some old dollies on it. Take a look at this little dolly. This was one of those little dollies that was printed out on flower sacks and then you cut it out and stitch it together and then it would be stuffed. And I love what it's stuffed with. Because of the holes in it, you can see that it's been stuffed with stockings. <laughs> stockings! And um, I don't even know what that... Yep, there's more stockings in there. So this little dolly was stuffed with stockings. And when did stockings come into into existence? I don't know. But this this little gal is pretty old, as you can see. I wouldn't dare even try to clean her. But I think she's telling quite a story, too. Just imagine how many stockings are inside this little body. And the last piece of furniture in this room. There are only just a, three large pieces of furniture in this room, because that's all that can fit in here is an empire dresser from the 1840s, 1820s or 1840s. Not really sure. I did research on it one time, but I completely forgot. And I've really minimalized what's on the dresser. I mean, normally there'd be perfume models and little jewelry boxes and all sorts of things, but I've just got hat boxes. And um, I put my Christmas things in those boxes. So that pretty much covers this room because it is terribly small. I've kept the decor in here actually pretty minimalist, which is not really my way, but in this room, it's a guest room, so I kept it that way. And I did a little bit of stenciling on this wall. Some very old bird prints framed here, and an old photo album. And that's about the extent of this very, very small room. So I hope you enjoyed this very little tour. And as the first video of the year, I didn't quite know what to do, but since I was cleaning these rooms, I thought, well, We'll just do a little bit of a house tour. So I'll see you next time with something completely different. And from Hopalong Hollow, then, this is Jerry. See you next time.